We're in this together and we're on problem number 71 of physics GRE GR0177. The ultraviolet Lyman alpha line of hydrogen with wavelength 121.5 nanometers is emitted by an astronomical object. An observer on Earth measures the wavelength of the light received from the object to be 607.5 nanometers. The observer can conclude that the object is moving with a radial velocity of. So the relativistic Doppler effect where the frequency of the sender divided by the frequency of the observer equals lambda observer over lambda sender equals one plus the quantity V over C, that whole quantity divided by one minus the quantity V over C and that quantity in the denominator square root. So 607.5 nanometers divided by 121.5 nanometers equals one plus the quantity V over C, that whole quantity divided by the square root of the quantity one minus V over C. So five squared equals one plus the quantity V over C divided by the whole quantity one minus the quantity V over C. So 25 minus 25 V over C equals one plus V over C. So 24 equals 26 V over C. So 12 over 13 C equals V. And we're gonna to have to do some algebra here. 12 divided by 13 times the speed of light, three times 10 to the eight equals 2.8 times 10 to the eight meters per second. Um, and so since the wavelength increased, it is red shifted and must be moving away from the observer. And that is answer D. Number 72. Two identical blocks are connected by a spring. The combination is suspended at rest from a string attached to the ceiling as shown in the figure above. The string breaks suddenly. Immediately after the string breaks, what is the downward acceleration of the up? upper block. So when the spring snaps, gravity pulls the top block down and so does the spring below it. So we need to add the gravitational and spring forces in the vertical direction. So MA equals MG plus KX. Since initially the bottom identical block and the spring force were in equilibrium and the block was stationary, KX has got to equal MG. Since the masses are the same, the final force equals MA equals MG plus MG equals 2MG. Divide through by the mass on each side for the acceleration A equals 2G and that is answer E. 73. For the system consisting of the two blocks shown in the figure above, the minimum horizontal force F is applied so that the so that block B does not fall under the influence of gravity. The masses of A and B are 16 kilograms and 4 kilograms respectively. The horizontal surface is frictionless and the coefficient of friction between the two blocks is 0 0.5. The magnitude of F is most nearly. So for block B not to fall, uh, the frictional force must be in equilibrium with the gravitational force. So U, at U times F uh, minus mg equals zero. Uh, so 0 0.5 f equals 16 kilograms plus four kilograms, that whole quantity times 10 meters per second squared. And we added the masses because the force needs to accelerate the system comprised of both blocks. So f of n, the normal force, equals two times 20 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared equals 400 newtons, and that is answer D. 74. The Lagrangian for a mechanical system is L equals a q dot squared plus b q to the fourth, where q is a generalized coordinate and a and b are constants. The equation of motion for this system is, so Lagrange's equation of motion is given right here, uh, d dt times the quantity partial of L divided by partial of q dot equals partial of L divided by partial of q. And so the partial of L divided by the partial of Q equals 4B cubed. And the partial of L uh, divided by the partial of Q dot equals 2AQ dot. Uh, so DDT uh, of 2AQ dot equals 2AQ double dot. So 2AQ double dot equals 4B cubed. Uh, I'm sorry, 4B times Q cubed. Um, and so Q double dot equals 2BQ cubed divided by A, 75. The matrix shown above transforms the components of a vector in one coordinate frame S to the components of the same vector in the second coordinate frame S prime. This matrix represents a rotation of the reference frame S by 
So notice that the a, that AZ transforms to AZ prime because A33 equals one, and that is this one right here. Uh, so the rotation is about the z-axis, so this leaves B, C, and E. Um, so let's look at our rotation matrix uh, for R, Z, and that's right here. Um, so we can test the A11 transformation for the R, Z matrix. So A of X, or I'm sorry, AX cosine theta equals A prime X. Um, so we know cosine theta must equal one half. Well, what degree equals um, one half when you plug it into the cosine function? Cosine of 60 degrees equals one half. Uh, we can also verify the A22 transformation for the RZ matrix. AY cosine theta equals A prime Y. Uh, cosine theta, again, is going to equal one half. So theta, again, equals 60 degrees. And so that right there shows that the answer must be E. 76. The mean kinetic energy of the conduction electrons in metals is ordinarily much higher than KT because conduction electrons in a metal form a collection of free non-interacting particles with pressure and other physical characteristics determined by quantum mechanical effects, known as a Fermi gas. It is the analog of an ideal gas in classical mechanics. As the lower energy states get filled in the Fermi gas, the Pauli exclusion principle forces electrons to the unoccupied higher energy states. This is because two fermions can only occupy the same energy state if they have different spins, plus and minus one half, for example, but no more uh, than two can occupy the same energy state. Um, so that is going to be answer C. Number 77, an ensemble of systems is in thermal equilibrium with a reservoir for which KT equals 0.025 EV. State A has an energy that is 0.1 EV above that of state B. If it is assumed the systems obey Maxwell-Boltzmann statistics and that the degeneracies of the two states are the same, then the ratio of the number of systems in state A to the number in state B is. Well, Maxwell-Boltzmann statistics we have g to the g of i equals the degeneracy of the ith state. Um, and in this problem, it was given that the degeneracies of the two states are the same. So let's set uh, the energy of the first state equal to zero. Uh, and then the energy of the second state would be zero plus 0 0.1 EV. And that's going to equal 0.1 EV. So N1 divided by N equals GI divided by the quantity E raised to the energy of the first state divided by KT. That's going to equal g of i divided by e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so that's going to equal g i. Uh, so n2 divided by n equals g i divided by the quantity e raised to the energy of the second state divided by kt. And that's going to equal g i divided by e raised to the quantity 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.025. And that's going to equal g i divided by the quantity e to the 4. So N2 is going to equal state A, which was 0.1 EV above state B. And 1 is going to be state B, where we set E1 equal to 0. So the number in state A divided by the number in state B equals N2 divided by N1. So N2 divided by N1 equals GI divided by E to the fourth divided by GI. And that equals E to the minus 4. And that is answer E. Lots of E's. 78. The muon decays with a characteristic lifetime of about 10 to the minus 6 seconds into an electron, a muon neutrino, and an electron antineutrino. The muon is forbidden from decaying into an electron in just a single neutrino by the law of conservation of. So we have a beautiful uh, presentation of the standard model of elementary particle physics down here. Um, and we can use this to know that uh, lepton number needs to be the same before and after the decay. Uh, muons have a lepton number of 1 and so do electrons and neutrinos, uh, while the antineutrino has a lepton number of minus 1. So we have 1 equals 1 plus 1 minus 1. Um, without the antineutrino, the lepton number would not be conserved after the decay. So because we have that we know it must be lepton number, and that is answer E. 79. 
A particle leaving a cyclotron has a total relativistic energy of 10 GeV and a relativistic momentum of 8 GeV divided by C. What is the rest mass of this particle? The relativistic energy equation, E squared equals P squared C squared plus M squared C the fourth. Um, so E squared minus P squared C squared equals M squared C the fourth. And 10 squared minus A squared equals M squared C to the fourth. So 36 GeV equals MC squared, that whole quantity squared, and um, MC squared is our rest mass, so take the square root of each side. 6 GeV equals MC squared equals our rest mass, and that is answer D. Number 80. A tube of water is traveling at one half C relative to the lab frame when a beam of light traveling in the same direction as the tube enters it. What is the speed of light in the water relative to the lab frame? The index of refraction of water is four thirds. So the speed of light in a medium V equals C divided by N, where N is the index of refraction. So V is gonna equal three fourths C. This is the speed of light in the tube as a stationary frame of reference but the tube is also moving at one half the speed of light relative to the observer in the lab. So for the observer in the lab, we need to use the relativistic velocity addition formula, where u equals the quantity v plus u prime divided by the whole quantity one plus uh, the quantity v u prime divided by c squared, um, where u equals the observed speed in the lab, and v equals 1 half c, and u prime equals 3 fourths c. So u equals 1 half c plus 3 fourths c, that whole quantity divided by the quantity 1 plus 1 half c times 3 fourths c, that quantity divided by c squared. So u is going to equal, we're gonna do some algebra again here, u is gonna equal 5 fourths c, that, whole, that quantity divided by the whole quantity, 1 plus 3 eighths, um, that is going to equal 10, eighths, 10 over 8 C, um, 10 over 8, that quantity times C divided by 11 divided by 8, uh, that is going to equal 10 over 11 C, and that is going to lead us inevitably to answer D. Okay, another fun set of 10. I will see you in number 81 next time.